Hey, here we go. Okay. Hi, welcome to If I Did It, a show where we analyze and solve PR kerfuffles from MMA world and beyond. I'm your host, Alexi Old. I can't believe uh, Eugene actually stopped talking when I gave the signal. I wasn't like, <laughs> no, you, professionalism. You, you, no, you missed my, my sound effect. Come on. <laughs> do, the, do, the, do the hand thing again. MMA world and beyond. Ooh. Oh. Hey, so, look at that Google so, effects. So. It has a reason I'm a, a near Grammy nominated. Uh huh. Yeah. Yeah. Joining yeah. us as always, King Nate of Bloody Elbow and Eugene S. Robinson. Like the kid Nate. I, I, that was a one-time joke. But... Oh man. Oh, he's giving it up. That's <laughs> it. You're kind always. Okay. Does. Heavy, heavy wears the throne. Heavy wears the throne. You're heavy, kind. heavy as a head that wears the throne. Uh -huh, and you, uh -huh. and you know what I found the other day? I found a picture of me and and your friend Craig Klaus on stage together. Oh yeah. I meant to send it to you, and then I forgot. Yeah, concept. Yeah, yeah. Then I forgot. So. Oh well. And that, my friends, is Eugene S. Robinson from Ozzy.com, an author of Fight Everything Everyone Knows. But asking, we're afraid you get your ass kicked for asking. Got it. Got it. And now, I, gotta, uh, I gotta praise some of you listeners for buying the book. Thank you. I appreciate it. And I love when you tweet pictures of you with the book. Uh, I, I like that. No, that's huge. It's funny. I I, I saw when my indie launch, as opposed to friends of mine with the the, yep. you know, with more budgets, yep. you know, I was like, wait a second, why is it all of a sudden all of these photographs are on Facebook with book covers and people, oh, marketing. Uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. Money changes uh -huh. everything, Alexi. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Anyway. So, uh, Eugene, you're at WME IMG. Woo! Baby. As the new owners of the UFC, you're inheriting a slew of PR landmines. Is it better for your brand to ease a transition or implement your culture as soon as possible. If the latter, what the fuck are you thinking by letting Dana White speak at Trump's GOP convention next week in Cleveland? Nah, nah, baby. Nah, you're 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 missing the point on this. You you do realize that we have it is it is like uh it, what is that great line, Auntie M. Uh, you're in Barter Town. <laughs> Come to Barter. You know, this is every <laughs> everything is for sale now. The the what is it? Let's use some other analogies. The gloves are off. The kid gloves are off. You, do you do you realize where you are now? Do you have any idea where you are now? This is this is the town that gave us. A, a continued career of significance for Woody Allen. This is uh, this is uh, this is a town that that gives a, a, a Oscars to Roman Polanski. This is a town that 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 Mel Gibson still is somehow significant. You don't. This is man. On the one hand, somebody said one of the commenters goes, "Oh, Fighters Union? What? <laughs> what? What? I, I guess you don't know where you are." Let me let me explain to you. <laughs> this is fuck it. Let's make this work, town. Mm. You know, I mean, you you don't think Dana at at the Trump uh, at the Republican National Convention? Wh wh how many people do you think voted for Trump? How many how many of the what percentage of those people who voted for Trump in the primaries are are routine and regular viewers of MMA? How many of those people mm. are, are fueling Tom Cruise movies or mm. Jason Jason Bourne movies? You think it's guys from the Upper West Side? No. This is a match made in, in some version of the afterlife that you probably don't want to be in for very long. I mean, this is great business, baby. I I can't think. I can't. And uh, you know, I remember once when I was doing this uh, 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 porn site for this crazy Russian-Israeli multimillionaire. And I was I was laying it on Arnold, you know, making jokes about Arnold Sig Heiling, the not, Nazi Schwarzenegger, the return of the Fourth Reich, and, you know, intermixed with all the porn. And the guy called me into his office. He was like, Hey, hey, Eugene, uh, hey man, Ixnay on the on the Arnold day. I go, What the fuck? What are you talking about? He goes, That guy's gonna be governor, and I'm gonna have to answer the phone. I was mm -hmm. like, Oh, you're crazy. And sure enough, I mean, this is good. Business, baby. There are no PR landmines. They're PR opportunities. Ah. And, and, and you are thinking the old UFC. This is the new UFC, baby. Bad boys will be framed, and they'll be cross collateralized through through Roadhouse one through eight. You know, the remake of of the Warriors. The remake. I mean, this is this is a treasure trove of possibility. And if you haven't realized that, if you're if you're an if you're a UFC fighter now. 
and you were not hustling your ass three or four times a week to an acting class somewhere in Hollywood, you're a fuck up, to quote uh, Sorrell. Mm. What do you, you think, up? Dave? I just can't get over Trump being tied with Clinton in the polls right now, so I'm just kind of uh, deer in the headlights with this. Dana, I, I think that the polls do show things, though, like Trump winning 0% of the black vote in Pennsylvania. And, you and can't Ohio. And Ohio. I mean, 0%. That never happens. I, I, ha I mean, I can't think of anything that's got 0%. I could now, walk out here, become a millionaire, or struck by lightning, and I'm not – I got a better than 0% chance of that happening. Yeah, I mean, Alan Keyes, the Alan Keyes voters, you know, didn't – Oh, Alan like, Keys, you know, can't like his arms. there's a few, there's a black Republican senator right now. I mean, you know, you'd think, uh, but Trump has managed to alienate them all. So, I, and being on stage with Sarah Palin and Tim, oh my god, you know, oh my god, Dana doesn't look. I don't know, man. I don't even know what to think of this because it's like. He's there because Trump can't get any regular Republicans, or maybe he doesn't want any regular Republicans. Maybe it's genius. I oh, he, he, doesn't, he can't trust anybody else. And if you don't think he's got somebody on that kill switch button up in the control booth, you are fucking wrong. He doesn't know. He, Mitch McConnell, he's, that guy has got like a delay. You know, yeah, Cruz yeah. is going to speak? Nah, 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 uh -huh. buddy. Nah, nah, nah. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I mean, at this point, I think we're beyond... Public relations and on into mind Kampf. I, I don't know what what the fuck here. I, I got nothing. I got wow. Nothing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, WME com clearly is cool with this. So, you yeah, know, you know don't, don't you think from a corporate perspective, you if, think it would be bad business? Well, I mean, but another thing, it, it, it could be to a certain degree. But another is it's kind of like what Eugene said with hedging your bets, right? So, the fact of the matter is. You know, when you have a reputation for having Democratic fundraisers and being pro-Democrat, well, Ari Emanuel is Rahm Emanuel's brother. Right. So by doing Democrat. this, it's a bonus in terms of being able to say, "Hey, look, I'm not going to stifle the uh, political beliefs of my employees or people that are working for." certain portions of my business units, right? So they can go on and do certain things. So to a certain degree, that's kind of a win. Another thing, like Eugene was mentioning, you're kind of hedging your bets. He doesn't have to, like, if Trump wins, right, he doesn't have to do the fundraisers. Dana White was already, like, yeah, doing he being things. Ari. He didn't, he didn't lock that. Yeah, Ari didn't lock it down. He didn't, like, hey, you can't. No, Trump, blackout. Like, nothing on Trump. So it's kind of like, it's a, it's, it, from a corporate perspective, I think that it is a positive in the sense of, you know, making sure that somebody like uh, Dana White, who's had long-standing relationships with Trump, and he, he said back in the day, he's like, look, Trump was there for us when nobody else was. Right? Yeah, Trump so, got him into New Jersey when they couldn't right. get anywhere else. So to stifle that might be a little too onerous, you know, but it'll be interesting to see what Dana White says. And how everything is fun. So it, it just add, continues to add to the the beautiful gumbo of chaos for this whole <laughs> political cycle. I will be watching that convention. With oh me. yeah, it certainly locks the UFC in as a sport for yokels. I mean, it's like, you know, yeehaw. Hey, hey buddy. Hey, hey, uh, Nate. Where do you think we're been? all yokels? Where do you think we've been? <laughs> <laughs> You know, my uh, fear is any time... Are you, are you having like, beers with that Just Bleed guy? That guy's <laughs> coming over to your house on Sunday, right? <laughs> he, he never brings beer, man. He, he's a, he's a he just bleeds. Ah, I, I bleed. that guy back. I, 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 a kid there is like, God, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> no, you, you only have the Just Bleed guy over once. That's uh, a... It's one of those mistakes that... Yeah, yeah I mean, I mean the thing is this, is, this is not, you know, it's not bad publicity. It's yeah. not. It's bad publicity if you think that, that Trump is going to be a bad leader. I am a few feet right now from some guy who's bet me money that Trump is going to win. He thinks he's going to be a good leader. It takes I all types. So. Yeah, yeah. I got to uh, say I'm more afraid of Clinton getting us into a war with Russia than I am of anything Trump's going to do, as I, bad as I think Trump is going to be. Well, you're, you're, that's that's completely wrong. But, I mean, look, look, look if, if you are – you're – he, he, he brought us this far. I've been thinking a lot about the bald one 
And I, and like I started to say on, on on Knuckle Up, this is not mere toadying on my part. The mere currying of favor and <laughs> suck, up a, <laughs> suck up a two to a guy who's got four hundred million dollars in the bank. I wouldn't say it if I didn't believe it. Are you saying if they poll California, Trump would be pulling one black vote? Is that <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 not Trump at all. I'm talking specifically about the bald one. I started to think about it, and, I, and I've come to the conclusion that what he's pulled off has been fairly fucking amazing. Oh, and yeah, that, he's and a that, legend. And that he, he deserves actually more credit than he gets. He, the, the fact that his personality is abrasive stands in the way for you for, from you actually acknowledging the fact that you could take 10,000 cardio kickboxing instructors from Boston or New York or Philly or any other city and they don't make it this far. Absolutely not. not you could give them dozens of friends like casino owners and they don't make it this far. You know, I mean, this is a, this was a, a, a perfect storm of you know, street smart, savvy, luck, but there was also a, an ability and a willingness to ride this fucking thing through. I'll give you a prime example. I am a stockholder at Ozzy.com. I'm the third person hired at Ozzy.com, right? So this is the equivalent of me staying for 15 years at Ozzy.com for it to pay out. You know how, look, uh, you know, that's my actual plan, but 15 years is a long time time, buddy. Especially at your age. Uh, exactly. To do anything. And Dana is, is approximately close to the same age as I am. So, you know, this is... Uh, and I just discovered we, we have friends in common. <laughs> the, guy, the, guy who, the guy who drove him... No, not a woman. Not Eskimo Brothers. The guy that drove him out of Boston is the guy who I interviewed for the fight book, Kevin Weeks, the Boston Irish Mafia He's guy. the guy who scared Dana out of, out of Boston. Yeah, he said $2,500 tomorrow at 1 o'clock. And he goes, I don't have $2,500. He goes, you'll have it tomorrow at 1 o'clock. <laughs> you know, Dana said, okay, I don't have $2,500, but I got money for a plane ticket. Good luck. See you later. He left. Right. You know, and he, this is a gym that he opened up with Petey Welsh. Petey Welsh, when I interviewed him for the fight book, he said, I want to interview you on a chapter on Kevin Weeks. He's like, hey, hey, uh, I got to call you back tomorrow. So I had to call Kevin and say, Kevin, Petey's going to call you. you know, just give him the okay. I want to talk to the guy. He goes, okay. So Petey calls him. He gets the okay. He calls you back, and Petey explains, look, got to do it, man. I got to – yeah, I got to – can't just be talking out the crack of my mouth. I got I got. I said, I got you. So what, what the bald one has pulled off is fucking phenomenal. The, the, numbers, the numbers of people we know who could have done something like that, very fucking few. Zero. So, zero. zero. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, yeah, he's a loud mouth. Yeah, and the fact that he's sticking around, it's probably built into the sales deal that he has yeah. to. But he is not a slave. I know people who have taken over companies very much in that have been, been uh, taken over very much in the same position he is. And, you know, they got fed up with the new owners, and three years in, they're out. They're done. Fuck right. you. I'm leaving, taking my money. Okay. So, my old uh, boss at, uh, at uh, Public Strategies Incorporated, they got bought by Hill and Knowlton. He had like a five-year deal, and everybody thought, well, Jack's done at the end of five years. And he was supposedly basically a ghost the whole five years. And then they have this meeting. I probably told this story before. They have this company-wide conference call. And instead of the old CEO or the CEO leading the call, suddenly Jack is leading the call. And people are like, what the fuck? And he's announcing, I'm taking over as CEO. I'm... And you know, here's so and so to announce his retirement. And everybody was like, "Holy shit!" Like some backroom uh, coup just happened. And so Dana could end up outlasting everybody. You know, you never right. know. You never know how these things play out. Dana gets in with Michael Dell, gets the money on his side. You know, you never know. Uh -huh. but I think Ari Emanuel's going to outlast him, but that's just me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, Nate, you fight for the UFC despite the sale to WME IMG. Did Dana you see White, me almost knock out Tony Ferguson us. last night? What did you say? Did you see me almost knock out Tony Ferguson last night? Yeah, I know, man. Jeez. That's why I'm so tired. Of, I had to fly up South Dakota and back. It was brutal. <laughs> hey, we, we, what, so, what was our win-loss thing? Did you do the tally now that Smirk is not around? I count nuts. Yeah, of course you did it. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I live in a... In a well, what I we do know is the Fertitta brothers are re retaining a minority interest in the UFC. That's yeah. what we know. So as UFC fighter, Nate, how do you navigate this, quote, meet the new boss, same as the old boss, end quote, situation? Give me my money, son. We got a congressman on our side. Do you see the congressman that that, that uh, sponsoring the Muhammad Ali Act? He's, he's saying the fighters need to join an association right now. I mean, the math is out there. Of course, there. of course. Isn't that fucking great? As soon as, like, it's like a shark. <laughs> What's that smell? 
<laughs> money, 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 money. <laughs> and, 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 and now the fighters have an advocate. I'm here for you. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, you know, you us congressmen don't come cheap. <laughs> Yeah, right. Sorry. I'm here for you, buddy, and you're sitting in, man, this is a nice Rolls Royce. Yes, son, yes it is. Anyway. Uh-huh. That's, my experience in D.C. was, it, it wasn't so much shocking the level of corruption. It was shocking how cheap the congressmen were. I mean, $200 oh, yeah. contribution, $2,000. Con you can make a $2,000 contribution and get a multi-million dollar business benefit. You know, the return on investment for buying legislators is one of the best deals in American business mm -hmm. today. So if yes. you're a fighter, you're making some contributions. You, you, man, I'm I'm organizing and agitating. Man, the math is out there. It's public record now. We know for a fact. You can't just. There's no more. Well, if you add in the secret locker room bonuses and all that crap, everybody knows the UFC's business at this point. And Lorenzo and Dana and Frank Jr. made more money than all the fighters ever combined by a mm -hmm. wide margin. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. The, 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 everybody's getting a raise. you got to understand. The smart ones, you know, they're going to come in. They're going to get – they want they want peaceful transition. They want people to be happy, positive. They want morale is always a big issue. So they're going to give some raises. They might even say, fuck it. Let's double what you get. If you are, you know, uh, Rafael uh, Sankau and you just got $15,000, you're like, oh, buddy. Guess what? You fight again. We'll give you 30. Really? All right. Thanks, boss. They doubled my... Get that guy out of here. You look, if you're smart, you drive a harder bargain, man. You're looking for Burger King commercials. You're looking for fucking, you know, it, it, side door additions for major motion pictures. You're, play, you're, you're playing everything they have to offer. You're not fucking around now. This is big time now. Now, big time. Ronda Rousey needs a third love interest in her next film, and yeah. it's me. That's. Uh, <laughs> I don't. I don't know if you want that. <laughs> well, speaking of what you want and don't want, Eugene, you're John Jones. Oh man. Tony Robbins told TMZ you're a client of his, and he believes you can overcome your problems if somebody cleans up their act or aggressively use it. This guy is going to be more hungry than ever. End quote. <laughs> With so many PR missteps. How do you leverage your resources to show WMEIMG that you are a worthwhile investment instead of a junk bond? I guess you just did not listen to what I just said. <laughs> well, I just spent eight minutes talking about. Listen, listen, you know, um, ha, let, let's go through the list of, of recent. Has Johnny Boney Joni had drug-fueled sex parties at his house with 14-year-old boys? Probably not. Has he... Has he drunkenly crashed his car and then gone on an extended 10-minute rant about Jew conspiracies? Um, has he slapped a fan? Has he vomited on an airplane? Or, if you're slash, urinated in the aisle of an airplane? You know, it was like, Robo it was like Robocop, <laughs> Robo Robocop said it best. They can fix everything. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know. I mean, it, it, again, if you're, if you are, like, he, I think he's on the right road. One, he got fucking played here. You know, uh, whether it was Novadex, Clomid, or Tamoxifen, I guess is the, the the generic name that he got caught with as a way to to cycle down off of something. Whether he was given knowingly or unknowingly, whether it's part of the supplement. It do, at at this point, the fact that he, the money he was getting from UFC 200. Made made him cost prohibitive, you know, whatever. Uh, uh, you know, it, it, the USADA could they have figured this out sooner than two days before the fight? Very possibly. I I I think it, something smells about the a uh, about him being being pulled off the card. I think it was fun. He said he got back to New Mexico and he like realized like I'm paraphrasing. I got two arms. I got two legs. I'm fine. I'm back to training. It's like they're not gonna. The, you know, there's certain things that will get you invited out of the party. Like, you will not see. I mean, Mel Gibson's talking about making a the Passion of Christ follow-on. Yeah, he he might be able to do that. You know, I don't know who's gonna get to distribute it. <laughs> yeah, no, I don't know. He's gonna go from house to house. You know, I don't know. Oh, I'm gonna put it up online. Yeah, if you start your own website. You know, and put it on. I, I, I think that the upside to a John Johnny Boney Joni is just too fucking huge. It's too huge. And if he if he realizes he realizes that in a way that helps him versus 
I am so huge. What are they going to do to me? I'm going to go have a sex-fueled dr drug party with teenage boys, and nothing they can do will stop me. Well, you might be wrong about that. Because Kelly might get to direct the next X-Men movie. That kind of... <laughs> Yeah, yeah. I mean, crazy, crazier things have have fucking happened. As long as you got a Q rating, that's worth a damn. And believe me, the more Johnny Boney Jones, the love for him now, not even arguably, the love for him now is higher than when we knew he was fucked up. You, you I, I want any anybody anybody to dispute that. It is higher than when when he was like this perfect preacher's son guy. We didn't like him, man. We didn't like him, man. Now he's us. He's having drug problems. He's leaving his pipe in the car. He's fucking up. He's got a baby's mama. He's running from the cops. He is us, and we are here. He, we are as big as he is, and he is as small as us. <laughs> what do you think, mate? <laughs> well, the problem is USADA has some rules, and so does the Nevada State Athletic Commission. Oh! <laughs> and... Dude, if dude pops for what Chael Sonnen and Rashad Evans and other people are saying he's going to pop for, which is estrogen blockers, which is a clear sign of bad intent, whether it's a supplement or whether he took it knowingly, he's going to, if, if, if he's going to claim it's a supplement, he's going to have to bring in the supplements that actually show the shit in there, like Yo Romero did. No, and he's going to have to. He's going to have to name it. They're going to have to get it themselves because if it comes from. Him, listen, I told you those are pills, right? Those yeah. are pills. It's not like it's so the level. If somebody says, "Oh, I got Winstrol V." Oh, I accidentally snuck it. Winstrol V is a fucking uh, 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 oil-based injectable steroid. How are you accidentally going to get that? You know? No Slipped. Yeah, yeah. So you're saying he could have accidentally got this stuff. Anything in a pill can anybody could accidentally get. You should know that. Yeah. yeah. So, but he's going to have to prove it. And well, if he can't yeah, prove yeah, it, yeah. he's out long enough. It doesn't matter what WME thinks. And I think Dana White hates his guts. And I mean, the way they did the promo, throwing him in the grease, they never do shit like that except for John Jones. Dana hates John Jones. And I think there's no coincidence that John Jones is black. Dana White speaking of the Trump convention. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's I mean, I just. That, or you know. I thought you were going to go with the fact that he's from Southie. Yeah, he's a boss. You know, you know. Well, that too. <laughs> that too. No, okay, all right, here. Hey, let's do a comparative study. Does he hate John Jones more or less than he hates Mystic Mac? Less. More. No, more. He hates John more. Jones more. So you, so, so you do agree that he hates Mystic Mac? Well, sure, but he needs yeah. Mystic Mac. Yeah, 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 right, right. Plus, yeah, I think there's an affinity for Mystic Mac, cultural affinity being from Southie and all, that he has with Mystic Mac that he doesn't have with John Jones. Also, the international headlines, too. I mean, the fact of the matter is, you know, John Jones is one of these guys who you said it best in the past, Eugene, in terms of the opportunities that he had to be able to cross over and yeah. how he was doing all these kinds of things before his problems emerged, right? Yeah, yeah right. So that's, he had the ball. And the yeah. fact of the matter is, for one reason or another, is it because there was this facade he had no one was buying, like he didn't, he didn't blow up to the same yeah. degree. He did not by any means. So if there's a situation now where his strength will be, I think going back to what you said earlier, I think his strength is one of two things. One is, his record and the fact that nobody beat him for that title. Mm -hmm. So no matter how long he's out, that is always going to remain. He's still the linear Nobody champ. beat him, right? Right, mm -hmm. so you have that going on. You also have the situation of falling from grace, right? So that's story. And then you have a situation where you gave advice earlier, which holds true for John Jones too. With this WME IMG situation, his options are exp have expanded in terms of what he can do if he is suspended, the acting class is building shit up to try to leverage the possibility mm -hmm. of being utilized by his new overlords. Mm -hmm. So he has an added dynamic, there's an added dimension to what he can bring to the new UFC. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see how he plays it yeah. and how that's juxtaposed with Dana White's hatred for him and whether or not there is any trust, you know, is it worthwhile having a guy who is believed to be unpredictable when you put promotion behind him mm. or not. So, you know, I well, think that's, uh, that's the uh, USADA uh, is a difference between the Hollywood things and, and MMA in the sense that you, yeah, you can have all these parties maybe. and stuff, but nobody's preventing you from, you can still step on a movie set. 
Correct. Right. Well, right? I, I, most I think, of them do. So I, I, I think to to counter what what uh, Nate was saying that uh, I think that uh, I, I I am not sure, and I'm not even comfortable saying that this is driven by racial animus. If if I'm putting myself in the Baldwin shoes for half a second, my anger and frustration with a, with a Johnny Boney Joni would have been that he could have been fucking huge. You know, it's like it's like the kid who's got you know, a, a 4.2 grade average, a perfect score in the SAT, and is completely disinterested in using any of his fucking smarts for anything. And, and you know, says I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go into something fucking really stupid. I'm gonna I, play video I, games. I'm gonna test video. I, games. Yeah, I'm gonna t- test video games. I mean, just something. But I, and 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 you say, well, what are you talking about? He was a fight. No, 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 no. He's got two brothers in the NFL. This could have been cross collateralized. Two supportive brothers, a family. This was an inroad into the most popular sport in America that could have been played for advantage. Not going to happen now. now. I mean, you know, I, 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 brother or no brother, I don't think his brother's agents are saying, hey, why don't you go out there and help John right now? Right. They're like, you know, you guys can, you can have heart to hearts at Thanksgiving. Stay away from him in public, you know. It could have been, it was a great bridge that could have been built. Like I said, I did the piece on Johnny Boney Johnny from from Men's Vogue. You know how many other MMA fighters have been in fucking Men's Vogue? Right. You know, uh, and, and and they sought me out to do this piece. It was like you know, it wasn't like I'm out there beating the bushes trying to get into Men's Vogue. They came to me and said, "Hey, could you do a piece for us on Johnny?" But they asked for him, so he could have he could be he everywhere Kanye is. Johnny Boney, he could have been at Fashion Week in Paris. Fashion, he could have been at, at the Cannes Film Festival. He had the makings of a, and instead he's hanging around with guys from the from the Quickie Mart in fucking in in Albuquerque, getting high. Come on, man. Right. Yeah, your father's a preacher, but you're 28 years old. You got you're, you're low expectation having motherfucker. You know. <laughs> You're so, channeling data. <laughs> yeah, right. So I yeah, mean, if I if I'm data, I, there, there might be twenty other reasons before before the the the, the race one to absolutely, to yeah, absolutely. Uh, but it's also falling off the wagon the... too. You you already had a situation where he had this major falling off the wagon. He did his Ariel Hawani piece in the park, walking around, how he's changed, all this kind of stuff. A little slight embrace to the dark side, and still had to cancel a fight. Later, so it's well, that's I, I, what's going to be interesting to see what they do with him because it's not as a situation. Oh, this is his first time. Let's see how we can milk it. It's well, like, if okay. it was a drug of recreation, if he got busted for cocaine after the event, for one thing, it wouldn't have ruined the the fight card. Yep. They then they could have said, well, we know you're struggling with with real shit. You can go into rehab, whatever. But this was a whole new thing out of left field. He he'd never had PED problems on the record before. Yep. And now he's a cheater on top of everything else. We knew he was a fuck up. We knew he was a party boy. Now he's a cheater, and it's just like, yeah, I, yeah, fuck John Jones. I think the dude's done, man. I don't, I don't know if we'll ever see him fight again. That's no, you're wrong about that. You're wrong we'll about see. that. You're right. Right. Oh, yeah. We'll see. As long as Bellator is out there, dude's fighting again. <laughs> you know, in a couple years. Yeah, two, yeah, three. yeah, yeah. Well, one, Maybe. one, uh, one thing that people thought was done and made a blazing comeback, Nate. Your Nintendo. Uh, Pokemon Go is a hit and a PR nightmare with kerfuffles ranging from security leaks, anti-Semitism. What? They fixed that. It no longer has access to your full Google account. But uh, Uh, I do expect a uh, lot of new uh, cell phone porn to be hit in the market. I mean... Well, and and the dick pics, that's also... The dick pics, that thing's fairly harmless. They got a character that looks like a penis and people are putting in, in photos and... You know, but the you so do, you, do you have to catch it all? Huh? What? Do you have to catch all these PR kerfuffles? They fixed the Google thing, which they had to do because nobody wants to give anybody complete access to all all their shit. But I mean, they had everything. If you on an, they had everything. They had they had to drive the whole bit. They had they had access to everything. So they this fixed that. This is why that. I stay away. I stay away from Gmail. People make fun of me for still having Hotmail. It's like get the fuck out of here. I don't want these guys. Now they know everything I'm searching on, and they know my. Ah, no, no, I'm not doing that. Sorry. Yeah, we all pick our battles. I, I don't use Apple stuff for the same reason. I I use a Mac for this, but I don't I don't. <laughs> I don't have an iPhone, but whatever. We're but all yeah. tainted. The thing with T 
telling people not to play Go at Auschwitz and the Holocaust Museum. That's an easy enough fix. Just don't do it. And maybe they can even geocode some locations where they're like, sacred ground, no Pokemon Go here. That would be a nice thing to add. The bit with people waiting, like in Missouri where you had the three kids uh, setting up like tigers on, on, on at a watering hole, setting up to jack people when they knew they were coming to score points on Pokemon Go. They robbed Spuzzle like eight people. I mean... I heard that was apocryphal. That was a myth. Well, there's people that are arrested for it, so... Well, they'll arrest They've you for anything. They've got mug shots. <laughs> yeah, they'll arrest you for anything. I, you know, I could have you arrested right now. Yeah. So, so what's your take, Eugene? Uh, you know... I have really tried my level best to avoid having any discussion about Pokemon Go. <laughs> uh, and in actual fact, there was a guy in front of my car yesterday. I was sitting at a red light, and he's doing it. And I had that fucking moment, you know. I had that moment where the light changed, and he's still in front of my car. And I thought, I could just fucking tap him. I could just tap him enough so that, like, he knows, but that I don't have to, you know, deal with insurance stuff. And I started inching the car forward. And my lady's in the car. She goes, what are you doing? I got oh. <laughs> <laughs> You sound your shit. Yeah, I was like, oh, oh I, I was not paying attention to something. I, was like, I just, I hate it, man. I hate these mass movements, and I've always hated them and been suspicious of them. That's why I've never seen E.T. That's why I'm not, I'm not joining, man. You know why? I saw an old Batman when I was a kid. And, and, and the King Tut had created this hypno disc, and he's like, gonna, "I'm gonna flash it on TV where everybody's watching, and I'm gonna hypnotize America." And so he did, it, and Batman interceded before, you know, on the favorite kid show, he could turn a nation of kids into zombies. I was like, "Yeah, you know what? I, I'll stand over here. You guys all see ET. You all show up at the Super Bowl. You all those messages that are being blasted into your head." You get to tell me about it. I'll appreciate it. Not playing Pokemon Go. Don't care to know about Pokemon Go. Not concerned. And I will try to run you down if I see you playing Pokemon Go. Damn. You know, my mother ruined E.T. for me because, you know, I saw the movie and cry. And it was a sad thing. And my mother said, that slimy alien. For all you know, that's where AIDS could have come from. And she said, look, let me tell you something, sons. If you ever see an alien... Come from outer space. Tell your mama. Tell me, please. Don't touch it. Don't touch the alien. Tell me, please. It's a good thing the police locked him up. You don't know what kind of diseases he had. <laughs> ah, 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 that's great. It's true. Uh, you could have brought space aids. Yeah, yeah right, right. Well, that's is some. You know, I got a guy, a professional MMA fighter, who carries a fully kitted out backpack wherever he goes. And I said, "What's the deal with the backpack, man?" And he says to me. Looks around from side to side, says to me, <laughs> "Space apes." <It's> what? <laughs> space <laughs> apes. Space apes, man. He's concerned about space apes. I didn't ask any questions beyond that. And every time I see the guy, even when I've seen him like at the UFC, he's got that backpack. Space apes. Space apes, man. I don't know what's in it, but it's his like, you know, space ape co uh, preparedness kit. So. Let's be being prepared. You this is a guy that all of us have seen fight in the UFC. I'm not going to mention his name. It's a mystery. Yeah. Speaking of mysteries, Eugene, you're new UK Prime Minister, Theresa May. Yeah. I saw Boris Johnson with a Chinese menu in his hand walking through the streets of Soho in the rain. Like other pro-leave PM contenders, he, contenders, he ended up as a pretender, turning tail and leaving you with a mess that you fought against. But you just shocked the world by making him your foreign secretary. How do you survive amid these werewolves of London? Oh man, you you let let's get some of our our friendly uh, UK uh, commenters in there because you know just because she wears leopard skin pumps doesn't mean so, somebody sagely said yeah and I talked to an American they're like oh this is like you know it's time women are taking over we got Angela Merkel we got Hillary we got the and you know <laughs> somebody said. Theresa May is bad news, like bad news. Like, you know, the UK pretty effortlessly approved full, like, full LGBT rights, you know, gay marriage is fine. You've been able to do that for a few, like, what, at least a decade in the UK, I'm guessing. I'm not the, the figures offhand. She's opposed it. She, she is a, a hard ass that will make Maggie Thatcher look like a kindergarten teacher. You, you think, you, you, <laughs> you know, this is... The UK is in for some difficult, difficult, 
difficult times. And, and if you think Boris Johnson being foreign secretary is just a, you know a quixotic turn of the screw, you're absolutely positively wrong. The UK is looking at some fucking dark times. And and I don't think I'm just saying that because, you know, I'm not anti-woman or this is anti-conservative. You got to understand when we talk about conservative, people who are conservative in the UK are like center right in America. <laughs> yeah, you know. I mean, given their, their tradition of liberalism, we're not. It's not the same thing. David Cameron is not a Ted Cruz, you know. It's not. It's not the same fucking thing at all, you know. But when you get somebody and, and what they've been, what they've ex excluded, this the religious kind of lunatic fringe fundamentalism that's driven a certain arm of the American uh, right wing has sort of been absent, you know. This whole morals cause they've been much more laissez faire about personal shit in the UK just because it seems like impolite to to intrude in people's business that way it not may is a different different thing entirely man and uh, and I'm I'm preaching dark times I, I got people who are seriously not just saying they, they, who are like coming to America I know cuz I got a guy a ticket I got him a ticket he will be here uh, August 18th he will be here so he's, he's he goes it's not going to get better I know I could come to America with my accent, snow Americans into thinking I know what I'm doing, get a better job and have a more fruitful existence. So long. I'll come back later, you know. <laughs> what do you think, Nate? Maybe. I mean, the thing with May was she was opposed to Brexit. And so people were thinking, Aha, well, all, the, horse. all the pro-Brexit. Well, Boris led the campaign for it. So, you oh, know. Now he's got a job. Amazing. Yeah, but it's like. So they were, you know, people were thinking, hey, she's going to reel this back. This is a non-binding referendum. The Tories are going to drag their feet and look at it and say, oh, well, you know, this is really a big pain in the ass. Do we really want to do this? But now she's got Mr. Brexit himself as her foreign secretary. And this is a guy who's – you can have like an ethnic slurs joke book by Boris Johnson. The guy has said so much stupid shit about other countries. It's unbelievable. It's like when Bush sent John Bolton to be the head of the UN, who, right. whose record statements about the UN were all tear it down. It's one yep. world government. Yep. You know, it's like this guy. I mean, picking Boris Johnson, she's already exceeded my expectations for awful with this stunt. I mean, this, yep. you know, this, this is she's yeah. This is going to be bad, bad. And Labor over there, busy trying to decapitate themselves and throw out the most popular leader they've had in decades. Says it all right there. I mean, the British are screwed. Yep. Sorry. Yep. yep. Yeah, I, I love these moves, man. I love these moves. There's a, I need to come up with a name for the political nature of a move that is, is the functional equivalent of this. Hey. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what? I mean, every organization can, every organization could do that, you know. If if the new owners of the UFC say, uh, we are gonna hire as our CEO in the uh, uh, the bald one will now answer to him, Randy Couture. <laughs> and Tito Ortiz. Yeah, yeah, Tito, this is the uh, and Frank Shamrock in a truck. Yeah, 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 they're gonna. So I think it would be a reality show that they were trying to. So. Uh, exactly. And this is this is how you lead through. Bing. You know, it's like. Tr <laughs> I mean, we see Republicans do that all the time, you know, in America. They've actually, yeah, you know. Maybe it's just lining up for Trump, though, also, because, look, I mean, Boris Johnson said that Barack Obama has an ancestral dislike of the U.K. because of his yeah. part Kenyan heritage. Mal, and he Mal, said about baby. Hillary Clinton, she has a steely blue stare, like a sadistic nurse in a mental hospital. <laughs> nurse, nurse Ratchet, baby. Yeah, he's calling on. And now he's working for Theresa May. It's like. But, but all that shit's a too erudite for for an American audience. But the British audience gets it, you know. But I don't know. Yeah, it's it, it's you know I, I don't care. You know why I don't care now? I don't care because the stock market doesn't care. That's why. And I'm not I'm not talking about the footsie. I'm talking about Nasdaq, baby. So fuck you. And I mean. Okay. I was, I was driving to work today thinking, man, this Middle East thing is bringing me down. I was like, fuck the Middle East, man. I, I want to go back. This has been a blot on my life since the OPEC, since the oil fucking problem and the uh, gas rationing in the 70s. It's just like a stain over my life. I go, well, well, wait a minute. Let me check NASDAQ. Oh, yeah. Fuck the Middle East. <laughs> <laughs> the few from the 1%. Our own NASDAQ, NASDAQ is doing gentlemen. fine, baby. So good luck to the rest so of So speaking you. about doing fine, Nate. Your French Prime Minister, Francois Hollande. 
<laughs> your spokesperson confirmed reports that your boring hairstyle costs. No price is too high to pay for beauty like this. That's that's what I mean. <laughs> Go ahead. Ten thousand euros a month, and that is not a big deal. According to BBC, he said, "quote Everyone gets haircuts." This hairdresser had to abandon his salon, and he's on tap 24 hours a day. End quote. Any need for PR to comb over this controversy, or is your stance coiffed hair? Don't care. <laughs> I don't know what his numbers are like. Oh, I, I think he's not doing. They're, I mean, they were Lepin bad. Is, they were bad. Yeah, Lupin is coming for this dude. And this is a let them eat cake moment, and his hair looks like shit. If he was Bill Clinton, and you know he's delaying flights so he can get his hair cut or whatever, even John Edwards had a little haircut problem. That's fine. That's part of his brand because they had glorious hair, and everybody like me that's bald is going, "I'm voting for the guy with the hair. Look at that guy. The guy has got the fucking Swinger. hair, man. I love him. I wish I wish I could be that guy. But this dude has hair just a shade better than mine, and it is." It's just it's terrible. Do you think it should turn into a moral thing like I am not allowed to have the expensive hairstyles? <laughs> just because it's it all like oh, sure. I guess just it's perfectly. Like I guess it's perfectly okay for for Barack Obama to have to go to supercuts and for Angela Merkel. But I I have to. Yeah, no. I think he should double down in, in outrage, snap back twice as hard, uh, yeah, just and stand at the podium. And start tearing his hair. Sure, sure, it's okay. Let me have fucked up hair. Are you happy? Are you happy now? The problem now is how now, now, now. Now. <laughs> how you would notice that this guy deliberately fucked up his hair. It always looks like shit anyway. Yeah, well, this is probably to conceal that he's having continued problems with his ex-wife and and his, and his the mother of his children. He's got that. That's a maybe a if he comes out with this is my pimp. I mean, this is the guy that brings the ladies in, and and you know, then I mean, if there's some explanation, like, no, this, no. Is, this guy has the best toot. No, no, Dodo the pimp, who is DSK's right hand man. He said, "Don't you think it's a little bit strange that your your best friend and your nearest associate is named Dodo the pimp?" He goes, "Strange." <laughs> that strange question mark in French. <laughs> Great, man. I don't even have a friend named Dodo the Pimp, you know. Um, yeah. yeah. So you know, so look, so look, ten thousand. Look, you know, I, I I'm gonna agree with with uh, Kid Nate on this one that uh, you know, but I also think that his his way out of it is you know the French do something really spectacularly well always, and that is outrage. And I think he needs to. It, this is the age for yeah. Well, Le Pen is coming, and and he, and he said, "Do you want somebody who cares so little about their out that they end up looking like Marine Le Pen?" <laughs> <laughs> and, and all of the men in France will laugh and laugh, and they'll vote for him the next election <laughs> because the women who are way too smart and sensitive will go, "That's an assholeish thing to say," but Marine Le Pen, no. We'll see. However, all the women in France are also saying 100% of us have been sexually harassed on the fucking subway, so maybe Marine is it's time to vote for her, you know. Well, it's a perfect segue, Eugene. Mm. You're Rupert Murdoch's sons. Mm. Former Fox News anchor Gretchen Carlson's sexual harassment and wrongful termination mm -hmm. lawsuit against your Fox CEO and chairman Roger Ailes is not only creating headlines, it's creating opportunity. Uh -huh. To get rid of Ailes, a man with whom you've allegedly engaged in what New York Magazine calls, quote, a bitter power struggle, end quote. With many current and former employees taking sides in the case against Ailes, is it better to cut ties as soon as possible or allow justice to run its course? Well, but you got to understand, nobody, nobody, none of these guys are sitting around waiting for somebody to make the next move on the chessboard. They're making the next move on the chessboard, you know. I mean, because the first thing you have to ask if you're Murdoch, and the first thing that Roger Ailes has asked himself is, where else could I be? You know, because wherever else he could be, that's a phone call you got to know he's already made, uh -huh. you know. Uh, and, I, you know, I, I don't know enough about the cable TV news landscape to know, the, the, you know, does, does he get his calls back from CNN? Or does CNN take the call and then float, f float, f you know, float to rumor mill that the call was made? Does, at does this that, point, at his age, as toxic as he is, yeah, yeah. even without the sexual harassment stuff, which is fucking vile. I mean, six, seven women have come out with allegations. The guy has a clear MO, and it's old school. It reads like something out of it. 
out of a cuckold Mad fantasy Man. book, man. I mean, you know, you want the job? Why, fuck me. And I'll only make you blow a few other guys, you know. And, <laughs> and, and, and yeah. Only, you know, special important people. And, and you know, the woman that was working for the Republican National Convention until she didn't blow him and then she didn't have a job anymore. I mean, it's old school ugly shit. He's old. Even without that, though, politically, he's toxic because he's the Fox News right-wing man. I mean, it's like Rush Limbaugh. He's not portable beyond his audience. Mm-hmm. He can't go to CNN. But it's fu- it's funny that you should mention Rush Limbaugh because I'm sure Roger's looking and go, this guy was arrested. This guy went to jail. Still got good numbers. <laughs> but he's a star. Ailes is a behind-the-scenes guy, and mm-hmm. I don't, I, you know, and at his age and at Rupert's age. Those Murdoch boys are ready to push, and I'm surprised. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, you know, it shows how powerful Ailes is that he's still holding on to this. So we will see. Yeah, but the, 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 is, he, is he holding on to something that he really wants at this point now? Was he just be like, yeah, you know, fuck I mean, he's part. a million years old. If he wanted to retire, he would retire. He's like Dick Cheney with the black heart beating yeah, the insect yeah. ichor. I mean, the guy, the guy doesn't stop. He's got world domination on his mind, and but, lots of young blonde hottie anchors to. Harass, apparently. Well, I so. like, I, I like, you know, it's like the the Godfather thing. We we got we got friends who might like a story like that. Uh, that he, you know, that initially, or I don't know if he compelled them, but he had to get some women coming out saying, ah, he's been a great guy to me. And it had to be attractive women, because if it was ugly women, it, they'd be like people would look at it and go, of course he's not sexually harassing you. Well, virtually you know? every woman on the Fox uh, lineup is saying that he's never done this to me. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. You the, ones who, the ones who are still employed. Yeah, right. of course. The right. implication is what they do to get that job and to keep right. it. You right, know? right, right, right. Which is well, why, it'll be interesting which is, to see what his contract is because you know, in terms of being able to give him the boot, because you know, you have some situations in the past where people with a lot of negotiating power make it very difficult to be able to mm-hmm. cut strings unless there is a morals clause in place, yep. and. Uh, Moral turpitude. We'll have to see. I mean, you know, I've negotiated a number of those, so you know. You know what? Uh, I, I'd, I'd, I'd like I'd like to ask a different question about it, and, and uh, you know, I uh, I've seen Roger Ailes, you know, and and I, and I know it's almost a naive question for me to ask, but um, do you think it weighs on guys like this to know that that the women that are having sex with you are doing so because they are compelled by reasons other than being attracted to you. Right? Clearly not. That's, I mean, yeah, I mean, he it doesn't bother it might also be a, yeah. it, might, it might also be an impetus, the reason why he gets off on it, the fact like, yes, yeah. I'm, you know, like what did Biggie say? Heartthrob never, black and ugly as ever, however. Yeah. 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 He's got a big mirror all over his room. Look at the toad that is plowing <laughs> you, bitch. Look yeah, at the yeah. ugly, hideous toad yeah. that is up in you. That, I mean, yeah, yuck. Yeah, you know, uh, yeah, I, I'm too, I, I'm too fucking ego full, man. That's I that spent too long being me, you know. <laughs> yeah, you yeah, know, I just I like, I like the idea that the people were like, oh, I'm at the Eugene Robinson party, not like I'm at the get a better job party. So right. I do what I gotta but do. You never you know. know. He could, for all we're projecting, we don't know. He could totally be of the mindset of believing he's like he's doing everyone a favor. You know, and that's why I'm he's only giving her, I'm you know. her life lessons. Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And also, you know, just the, all that kind of stuff. You never know. It's not a for advancement here for a young woman who knows how to use her head, if you know what I mean. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Where's the sound effect? I pressed it and didn't make it. Oh, so anyway, uh, <laughs> Nate, you're, Israel Defense, you're the Israel Defense Force. Your intended new chief, Rabbi Colonel Eyal Karim, has, quote, provoked controversy with previous misogynistic statements, such as opposing female conscription and implying that rape was permissible in times of war, end quote. Mm -hmm. Despite the outrage, he brushed off the controversy as completely mistaken, calling Colonel Karim's analysis, quote, an answer to a theoretical question and in not any way whatsoever a question of practical Jewish law, end quote. Explain the PR behind standing your ground. Avador Lieberman is in the government. He can just, like, they don't care, he, you know? And he can also say, you mistranslated the Hebrew. That's the line they're going with. I mean, you know, it, it, it just does not care. The, the, he doesn't have to answer to anybody who is upset about this stuff. Like, they are running hard to the right. The Orthodox, the Hasidim, all these guys are 
un, 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 unrestrained. The settle, settlers, it's open season, go. Bulldoze houses, take it, take it, take it. He doesn't have to do shit. Like, you know, when Netanyahu gets voted out of office, he might have a problem. But right now, dude doesn't care. What do you think, I, Eugene? I, hey, man. Look, you know what? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I had a friend, a friend of mine recently is a big supporter of Israel, and he said, you know, he had traditionally not been a fan of Bibi, and then he said, where the Bibi, the world has shown something super interesting. Where the Bibi does this, or Bibi does that, there's nothing but international, glo global condemnation for Bibi. So Bibi should now be free to go do this or that. It doesn't make a fucking difference. If he tears down the settlements, he's somehow fucked up. If he builds the settlement, he's a, so he's just going to do whatever he's going to do. And what is Bibi going to do? Well, he said it himself. He's laid it out. He goes, given the history of my people on this planet, if I have a choice between overreacting and underreacting, I'm going to overreact. Uh, you know, what, what drives Israelis crazier than anything is the fact that people who have no understanding of the region at all are, 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 are passing judgment on the basis of the fact that they've thrown a few nickels their way. I mean... Uh, a few nickels. paid for their entire military apparatus. Okay, so take that, man. If people were getting stabbed routinely in the street, if we could identify stabbers... stabbed and shot, like in Chicago. I mean... We could identify if we could identify we could culturally identify the stabbers and the stabbies. Like, look, you know what? And Donald you know Trump what? is running on that exact platform. You know, you and know that's what? That's why he's speaking at the convention. It's yeah, like he's you know, a secret guest. Yeah, you, you, you know what? You know, you know what, my, what my what my hardcore uh, uh, fans and uh, supporters of Israel said after 9/11. The first thing one of them said, this guy was the only guy in high school who I knew was a member of the JDL, said. Now you know what it feels like. <laughs> he goes, imagine that shit every fucking week, routinely, for the last 10 years. America got one 9-11 and they flipped out. We have them all the time. You know, the, the reality of it is, you know, there have been a serious, earnest attempts to find a solution. And there have been just as equally serious and earnest attempts to... Uh, defy the solution. Much like in Northern Ireland, you got to realize these guys are getting their paychecks, you know, specifically for being refuseniks, you know, and I'm sorry to mix modalities. You know, nobody knows what people in Palestine really, what, what Palestinians really think because the Palestinian Authority will kill you if you say, ah, you know, I, I'd really like to go for the a The demographics speak for themselves. The people in Gaza are fucking miserable. I mean, there's there's no... Right. Yeah that, that, yeah, yeah, that 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 is. I mean, cool. would you want to be in Gaza? Would you rather be in Tel Aviv or Gaza? Just answer that question. It's just like no. I saw I saw a liberal <laughs> professor shut up a whole audience full of racist assholes with, "Okay, white people, who wants to be black in America? Raise your hand." Yeah, nobody. and, they, and, they, and they, nobody. Who and wants they, to be Palestinian in Gaza? Nobody. Well, they've I mean, su they, they've succeeded by by conflating these things, you know. So it, conflating it's, what? You can play it, you know, kind of comparing Palestinians to the Native Americans, comparing the African Americans, and they've on college campuses all over America. Fuck, I'd rather be on the Sioux Reservation right now than in Gaza, and the Sioux Reservation is one of the worst fucking places you can be on the planet. I mean, <laughs> Gaza, Gaza. Okay, is all right, all right. Here's, uh, all right, let, 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 name a place you'd right, rather right, be in Gaza. Well, let, let's let's armchair armchair wise, I I'll give you ten seconds, twenty seconds even. What? How do we solve it? What's the solution? Get back that's, to that's, get back that's to a million dollar Bank. question. Oh, but, okay. All right, good. Well, there actually is a solution, which gentlemen, is? which is our teachable moment. <laughs> Eugene, uh -huh. your Earth scientist supreme, Neil deGrasse Tyson. <laughs> Before last week's insanity, you tweeted, quote, Earth needs a virtual country. Hashtag rationalia. With a one-line constitution, all policy shall be based on the weight of evidence. End quote. <laughs> Some felt their inner dungeon master awakened after decades of dormancy. Others found your alignment tray lawful evil and were reminded of eugenics, fascism, and Walter White from Breaking Bad. If folks want beef, should you serve it or admit there was no meat behind your tweet? <laughs> yeah, you know what? I mean... Um, I, I don't want to shake a guy's hustle, you know. <laughs> you don't see me talking <laughs> shit about Tony Robbins in the in the brick in the brick. You did two brick. weeks ago. <laughs> not, not really. I, I I acknowledge. I thought it was a pretty good scam. And L L Ron Hubbard, 
pretty good scam, man. I'm, I got to say, you know, I wish they'd cut me in on it. You know, you don't end uh, up like Elron Hubbard. That's the thing. How did he end up? You mean with he ended up on a boat, clinging to life as people fought over him, like you know, like Jimmy Cagney's corpse backstage at the Oscars. I mean, he, you know, he what? became a pawn rather than the king in the game. And, and yeah, then, you well, you know, that's better than I'm going to end up, which is in a refrigerator box in the under over an under under an overpass. <laughs> so you know, so I I I think you know, I mean, the guy's hustle is is very specific. I mean, nobody really thinks it. Rationalia. Nobody really. This is not. This doesn't. Well, have anybody any... who's looked up the word "constitution" in the dictionary realizes a one-sentence constitution. That's not a constitution, dude. That is not a constitution. Like. Yeah. 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 I, I. You know. I, I mean, mean, what is a constitution? A constitution is a binding legal document that spells out exactly how a government works. Okay. See, the problem is you're t you're like Joseph K. When the police show up to arrest him. What you should have done if you were Joseph K is go, I <laughs> close the door. That's what, that's what you do. <laughs> but you're not doing that. You were doing the Joseph K thing and gathering your papers and getting ready to go down to the courthouse to fight these scurrilous charges against you. I mean, the guy's got to hustle. What, whatever. Yeah, I mean, can you think just for a second now? Imagine, imagine I were him. Can you imagine the stuff that would come out of my pie hole? <laughs> and how many more viewers we would have? That's the yeah, thing. That's exactly. right. The, the accountant calls up and goes, "Hey, man, you're writing checks on cash you don't have. You gotta what? They're gonna take back the rolls." And then I hold a press conference and say, "We're we need to we need to new country called Penisalia, and in which everybody." Worships my penis. You just crazy, <laughs> penis alia. What is that? That's not even a real country. We. Oh yes, thank you, thank you very much. So what Sales should he do up. then? So should he? I mean, if you're him, because the thing is, like the whole you know he being rational. Out, cause cause idiot should, should he double down or should he just double like, down? He double goes, down. Yeah, he goes down. with it. He goes with it. Because anybody that's on board is on board. Like, yeah. you know. This is like, like, pe like people talking about the Hillary and who's going to be her VP pick and it should be contingent on, oh, and she's been taking these pictures with Kane and the, with the Bernie thing. It's like, I, I'm still I'm still bullish on, on Elizabeth Warren. You go, no, well, any, any, anybody who's not, anybody who's not going to vote because of Elizabeth Warren on the ticket is not going to vote for Hillary, right? right? It's not like, oh, I vote for one broad. But two broads, that's too many. Yeah, you know, come on. You know. Yeah, but Warren's out. Warren's already out. She's speaking the first night of the convention, so we know it's not going to be Warren. All right. Well, what, wow. are you, what are you going to do, Nate, with regard to uh, Neil? If, if you're, you're Neil him? Tyson, you write it out. I mean, nobody who's following him on Twitter got that anyway. Like, I saw my Facebook <laughs> feed was full of people. Oh, this is genius. I'm like... <sighs> you know, it's just they're turning science into another kind of religion, which is the ultimate heresy against science. Like, I've been an atheist my whole life, and nothing pisses me off more than these Richard Dawkins assholes trying to make a religion out of atheism. Like, I've never bought the whole big guy in the sky happy ending crap, but I've seen people at funerals get comforted by things written out, you know, reading out of the Bible. When somebody is comforted at a funeral by some shit Richard Dawkins wrote, that's when it's a religion. In the meantime, it's just assholes forming a cult, and it's fucked up, and I hate it, but Tyson's got a great gig going. Keep milking those idiots as long as he can. Plus, he's a pretty good science educator. I mean, this is a guy I actually like Tyson as opposed to Richard Dawkins. Now, Richard Dawkins is a great evolutionary biologist, but he needs to shut up about theology. Tyson, though, mostly is really good at what he does, and I like what he does mostly, but this is not going to be... This isn't... This isn't Getting caught with a live boy or a dead girl here. This this isn't even a speed bump for him. Well, it's interesting. You know, is you know it's my, not just... my, my penis has comforted quite a few people. <laughs> <laughs> you keep telling us that, but where's the I, testimonials? It's out there. You know, so I'm 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 very serious about this penis area, and I'd like to get some of that Neil Neil money. If we could just float some my way, that'd be great. Right. Well, you know, I was going to say that the sad thing is he's going to totally destroy the legal industry, but the fact is, if we wipe everything out and have a new constitution, there's a new industry of interpreting that one line. Yeah, that one line, man. That's The lawyers are going to be busy forever with that Hello. shit. Yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and every president in Congress will be making it up from scratch. Oh, what the hell? Eugene. Sir! It's time. Oh man, we got time for your lost battalion. Oh man, I, I can't. I, I can't fucking wait for this. I mean, the, you can't tell me 
You can't tell me that. Not every single one of you, within the sound of my voice right now, when Johnny Hendricks said, hey, I'm pretty over fighting in Vegas, didn't go, oh, my God. It's a voice from the mist. <laughs> it's a, I mean, have you? That's, that's one of those moments. That's up there with Julia Dos Santos. And yeah, when I fight for the championship next time, man, you can, you can feel it's like driving to San Francisco in July. When it's oh, the rest of the Bay Area, it's sunny, it's nice, you're in a t-shirt, and you're pulling to San Francisco, and suddenly you're freezing to death. It was just like that. You're over fighting in Vegas. You're over fighting in Vegas? Have you listened to yourself? Are you fucking kidding me? Man, that was stunning. It was like a hundred foot cliff dive <laughs> no, into the lost battalion. I mean, <laughs> were you were you I was what's the British phrase? Gobsmack. He went big. He went big. So that's that's I mean, there there you know, there, there are others, other lessers, but in terms of you know, the higher ranking officer candidate training school here, that's number one on my list, baby. That was solid. Solid, you know. Yeah, that was remarkable. Now, he might as well have said, I'm just over fighting, because that's how he... Yeah. He didn't yeah. make weight, looked like shit in the fight. He's looked like shit ever since the new drug testing regime and weight cutting regime have been imposed. I'm not saying he's doing anything. I'm just saying, hey, he started looking like shit at the exact same time they started changing all these rules. Mm. You know, you draw the conclusions, he but... He just be hanging on also until GSP comes back and is like, you know... Uh, you know what? Actually, now that we're, that we're in, talking about Lost Battalion and, and we're that, in that arena, I I I think that GSP is making, uh, like Joy Division said, a fatal mistake. <laughs> but on the Reebok and fight, son. That's I, I I think he has vastly overstated. You know what? He's gonna have a fucking ensign uh, enemy moment. You know, it's like. It's like people who 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 get caught up in riptides. You know, mm -hmm. I'm doing fine. I'm doing fine. Suddenly, I'm not fine. Suddenly, the beachfront is 200 yards away. Suddenly, something has happened. Ensign probably went into a fucking jujitsu academy. Go, yeah, I gotta get back into this game. And started having a seriously hard time with a fucking purple belt. And was like, oh my god, oh my god. You know what? You know, you know who doesn't. Who doesn't, you know, he's rehabbing right now from wrist surgery, but you know who doesn't really fuck around like he used to just grabbing me and rolling? You know, Sorrell. I, oh. I, I realize that, too. There are blue belts who I used to clown. I don't fucking clown them anymore, man. I don't clown them because if you're doing this shit on the regular, stuff moves. GSP is out there seeing his family, trying to have normal relationships with people, you know, training casually, working on his movement. He, he's, go, he's going to play himself, uh, like the old hip hop. Experience. You're going to play yourself. You'll come back. Yes, you'll get a big payday back, and you're going to say the same thing all these guys say who have been out for a long time and come back and, like, oh, guess I got to adjust. You, you got to adjust. You better fucking adjust, you know? So, uh, so, so, so. In other words, we got a Johnny Hendricks in the Lost Battalion, you know. And I'm not entirely sure that I, when I, any time I hear GSP speak, will he or won't he? Is he gonna stay? Is he gonna go? What's he gonna do? That I'm also not here getting communiques from the Lost Battalion, you know. Man, you are gonna get fucked up if you don't think that this is that the game now is different than it was two years ago. You are wrong. And I know Chuck Liddell sitting in his seat without his shoes thinking, yeah, I could, I could. You are wrong. <laughs> you are you don't wrong. think the WME IMG thing changes things, though, in the sense that he thinks there's more opportunities well, given his life? He's a CAA guy, a CAA yeah, guy, yeah. guy, so he's even more on the outs than ever now. Mm. Yeah. Yep, yep. It's something well, you need to think about. You know, unless they're going to do some cooperation thing, which I can tell you beyond a shadow of a doubt, that game. CAA and William Morris are not – not doing that at all. So, uh, no. uh, yeah, you got to know. You and the know. Reebok thing between the lines has that's clearly been the hitch and the giddy up and getting GSP back in the octagon. Is he wants to keep his sponsors because it's a multi million dollar thing for him if he loses all his sponsors and gets the Reebok payment. I mean, 
that's a huge money out of pocket, and I guess they're not making that up for him, and, and they don't think uh, they're doing that. You know what? You know what? And I'm not going to be see, surprised to see this happen. You got to know you got to know that Emmanuel and that some of the other cats at, at Wilhelm Morris are like, the Reebok deal sucks. <laughs> One would hope. One you know, no, no, no. I don't. These guys are way too savvy, way too smart. So it's not so much how do we ride it out. To, how do we get out of this thing now? Now, 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 now. Right, because yeah. they don't have this whole notion of we need legitimacy. We need to be respected. We look like a league. It's like we just bought it. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, are. It's a totally yeah, different yeah, yeah, kind. Yeah, yeah, of, yeah, yeah, it's like it's, a, it's like NBA under Stern and post Stern. You know, in the sense that yeah, you work hard to build up your brand to get a certain degree of respectability and to clean certain things up. But at the end of the day, once you've done that, and there's somebody else in charge. Yeah. Also, also, all, all uh, Ari uh, Ari has to do at a meeting is, excuse me, could you guys push away from the table? Now, now, could you put your feet on the table? Uh huh. Okay. Ah, uh, what kind of shoe? New Balance, New Balance, Adidas, Nike, Nike, Nike. Great. We're out. <laughs> you mm. know. Uh, <laughs> so. Speaking of being out, thanks for joining us. Follow us on Twitter at Eugene Robinson, Eugene S. Robin, at Eugene S. Robinson, at Kid Nate. I was thrown off by the king, at Alexi Old. Please give us a thumbs up, Eugene. Ah, uh, yeah. This is my Pokemon Go thumbs up. <laughs> <laughs> Got to catch them all. Mm -hmm. And leave comments on YouTube. Subscribe to MMANation.com on YouTube and MMA Nation on iTunes. Visit Bloody Elbow. Read Eugene at Ozzy.com. And be sure sex, to... sex column up today. Sex with Eugene. All right. Yeah. And be sure to check out all three of us on Amazon.com. We'll be back next week with another installment of If I Did It, and we don't know what we're going to be discussing because the PR kerfuffles have yet to be made. <laughs>